August. I pre-ordered Marvel's Avengers on my PS4 so I can play the beta. I'm excited because I've been a bit wary of this game and how it looks, but I wanted to see it for myself. Will I like it? Love it even? So I installed the game and... What? Maybe it was just that one time. I played with my friend Alchemax, and that was fun. All right, let's oh. go, let's go. Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. So I thought, okay, let's duh, wait for the final release of the game so I can make a final decision. And September 4th came, and uh, it's okay. It's a very okay game. But why is it just okay? Why should you wait for a discount? Well, let me tell you. So here's the thing, if it doesn't seem worth it to you, and you want to save your money, keep that sweet green and credit in a wallet. An extra wallet. Aw oh man, where's my wallet? Exter is the world's largest smart wallet brand designed to innovate the way you carry everyday items. The Exter wallet is quick access for every card you need, it has RFID protection, which means your money, cards, and identity will be safer than ever before, and it is made with premium leather, ladies and gentlemen. If you lose your wallet, you don't have to worry because it's trackable. If you have a phone with you, you can track it and even call it. The Parliament Brown Wallet, this wallet holds around six cards depending on how thick they are, it has a loop for your money, and overall is the sexiest thing I've ever seen. If you want a wallet this stylish, just go to the link in the description to get 25% off. Hell yeah, that's right, 25% off for a wallet this sexy. It's an offer you honestly cannot miss. Thanks, Exter, for sponsoring this video, and now let's talk about Avengers. Did this game just freaking glitch on me? I'm pressing R2 right now. Look, you hear it? This game just broke on me right now. Part 1, The Basics The game isn't shit, I'm not saying it is, there's a lot to be had, and the game offers a lot, but it really never does anything interesting with all the things that it has. Like yeah, this game is definitely not what I wanted, it's essentially a looter-shooter game. It has these RPG elements and that's okay, but gear only makes you stronger and doesn't customize your appearance, like Injustice or Destiny. Yes, Destiny did this better than Avengers, what is the world coming to? That being said, the game can be very fun to play at times, characters definitely have their upsides and downsides, but once you get the hang of a character, it can be rather fun. It is kinda lame how Captain America Super Soldier, to me, is more fun to play than this game. Oh, and Iron Man 2008 is more fun to play than this game, too. And please let me know if you've played those games. Those games were freaking bangers, dude. Ugh, more on that later. As a downside, a lot of missions, including single-player ones, feel designed for multiplayer. So tons of enemies swarm you, and it's an absolutely ridiculous way to increase difficulty. Instead of giving you a challenging fight where you have to really think, the game just shoots out tons of enemies to give you a hard time. And then there's the whole battle pass system where you have to complete challenges for rewards and stuff. And it's also whack to me that even though the main story of the Avengers can be completed in around 8 hours, that story can actually be condensed down to like 3 or maybe 4 hours. Which means, wait, you just said that the game was like 8 hours long. What do you do in those spare 4 hours? Part 2, Repetitive Combat. Oh, this is the best part of the game, by the way. The loading screen. Nice. Hell yeah. Dude, we're still traveling to the destination? Okay. The repetition in this game is honestly embarrassing. It's just you get a cutscene, fight robots. Get a cutscene, fight robots. Get a cutscene, fight robots. And sometimes you have to like secure points or rescue people, fight waves of enemies. And to do this, you just have to punch stuff. There's really nothing interesting, nothing substantial. And the boss battles suck, man. The beta actually makes me think, you know, of this little conspiracy. They put the Abomination boss fight in the Taskmaster boss fight. Oh wow, you get to fight all these villains. Those two are the only Marvel supervillains you fight in the game besides the final boss. That's ridiculous. Remember Marvel's Ultimate Alliance where every boss fight was a classic Marvel villain? Oh, you wanted to fight Bullseye? Ultimo? The Wrecking Crew? Nah, how about Warbot? No, you don't like that? How about Warship? Those are the actual names of the bosses, by the way. Most bosses, including the side mission bosses, are just big robots. You have to damage certain points on them to take them down. It's incredibly boring, and the only enjoyment you get out of it isn't actually fighting them, it's the joy you get of finally beating them because they're so tedious. Come on. Oh my god. Uh, 
God, that was the most annoying thing I've ever had to fight in a game. And guess how you beat the final boss in the entire game? Damaging certain points to just take them down. And that's where I get to the crux of the problem the game's gameplay has. Now, there's gonna be spoilers from here on, so if you don't want any spoilers, then uh, definitely leave. And if you don't care about spoilers, then please stay, I really appreciate it. Well, this game needed some time to be polished. Graphical issues and buggy elements aside, the gameplay feels incredibly floaty. The punches don't really feel like they're making contact, especially Thor. A lot of this has to do with the sound design too. The sound design in this game is ass. Every time you punch someone, it feels incredibly weak. And I think the combat is just okay because this game was designed with so many characters in mind. A character like the Hulk is of course gonna be nerfed if you're gonna be playing alongside Black Widow. The game is repetitive and uninteresting because missions have to be playable with every single character. And no character can do something radically different from another because that wouldn't be fair to the players. The best missions in the game are missions that are strictly designed for one character to push the story forward. In these missions, you can't choose which character you want to play as. The game forces you. Like the mission where Iron Man goes to space. It actually feels like it's building to something. It feels like the mission has purpose because it genuinely does. The best missions are the more cinematic missions, the one where you genuinely feel like you're an Avenger. You have to do something and you actively see other Avengers helping you, specifically you, to complete your objective. Playing as an Avenger and then having an AI fight with you as an Avenger is not the same thing, and that's 80% of the game. Just beating up robots with the usual quippage in the background and it gets incredibly boring. And that brings us back to Iron Man and Captain America Super Soldier. Iron Man, and I can't believe I'm saying this, makes you feel like Iron Man. Captain America Super Soldier made you feel like Captain America. These two games, while not amazing, are still fun to me because they're designed around the moveset and powers of the characters. Avengers falls apart because it's almost too broad. And because it's trying to do everything, it never does all these things it's trying to do well. But thankfully, the story is the saving grace of the game, but it's still mediocre. Now, the story hits the usual points a story should. It's incredibly cliche, but it has heart. And the best part of the story is, well, the Avengers. I've been hearing people say Kamala is the heart of the story, and yeah, sure, whatever, but the actual interesting part is the dynamic the Avengers have. It's no coincidence that the game becomes good when Black Widow enters the scene, because now there's enough Avengers in the main cast to make the interactions interesting. These characters have baggage. They're friends, but they also dislike each other. They clash, they have a falling out, and hell, there's this perfect scene of Tony and Steve talking in a space pod, where they assume they'll die soon, and that scene is fantastic. Uh, at least it's a good view. That it is. But this all happens in the last three hours of the game. The other five hours is... And the mob and the press tell you to move. You say no. You move. What? This is probably gonna be a hot take. Like 50% of the dialogue in this game is cringe. It's the most cookie cutter thing imaginable. It reminded me of the banter in Joss Whedon's Justice League, the movie that was trying to copy Marvel's humor. And so you cannot really take anything they're doing seriously because they're cracking jokes or saying something quippy and smartassy so constantly and frequently. It reminds me a lot of like Andromeda and Anthem, the dialogue in those games where you really couldn't take what was going on seriously because everyone was just saying just like really dumb one-liners. Now, did you know that in Marvel Spider-Man, they recorded the dialogue twice? Yep, they got Yuri Lowenthal to voice his Spider-Man lines for when he's idle and for when he's swinging. So if Spider-Man's calling Mary Jane and you're just having the character walk around, he'll be like, Hey MJ, have you found any clues yet? But if he's swinging, he'll be like, Hey MJ, have you found any clues yet? Seriously, try it. But in Marvel's Avengers, there's a complete disconnect with the character and dialogue. The characters are experiencing all these enemies attacking them, but the dialogue is so chill, it's so odd sometimes. And the constant humor can kill a lot of the tension. Like even Spider-Man in Spider-Man PS4 knew when to take things seriously. These jetpack guys annoying anyone else? Kinda remind me of another flying suit of armor. Oh, how dare you talk about Thor like that? <laughs> Now back to Kamala, we know almost nothing about her other than her love for the Avengers, which is ridiculous because I do not give a f if she fangirls over Mr. Stark. I want to know more about Abu and her friends and her life. She's pretty much defined by the Avengers and her powers, honestly, and that's just not great. 
Abu is used for a cheap emotional moment at the start of the third act of the game, and it is so mid. Because I don't have enough time to understand how much Kamala cares about him. I don't have enough time to understand why she would want to return home and to her normal life when things get hard. I never feel like she feels having inhuman powers is gross or taboo. Saying how you feel isn't enough, I want to see it. While her story is about accepting herself, I never felt like she ever truly didn't accept herself. So I think when she goes all like, yeah, I'm accepting myself and I'm tall girl now, it falls flat. So to me, again, yes, the most interesting part of the Avengers game is the Avengers. Because like I said, they all have that baggage and they've all legitimately failed and have to rise from that. Why'd you smash the reactor cap? That line carries more weight than any other line in this entire game. That story is much better executed and is way more interesting, and that story is like a third of the game. The other two thirds are mediocre and monotonous. What's most disappointing about this game is how average it is. It's not bad or anything, it's actually good at some things, but as a whole, it's average. And that sucks because this is Avengers. This has a lot of money behind it. And the end result isn't a Spider-Man PS4, it isn't a Batman Arkham. It feels like a mediocre movie tie-in game 50% of the time, just with a lot of features, and that kind of sucks. It actually really reminded me of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. I will say, playing with friends is fun, and I legitimately recommend that, but every game is fun with a friend. Wait for this game to go on sale, because it's not worth it in my opinion. It's not that it's bad, it's just not great. And this is a game that had no reason not to be great. Thank you, Anderson, and Struggling Artist, also known as Sea Monster Q, for the fan art. I love it. I also want to say, bruh, like, like this is the visual style I f with, for real. I vibe with this so hard, it's not even funny. Thank you so much, Chads, for reaching the end of the video. Make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, an anime I'm making. And I bet you're wondering why I just said Chad. Well, Chad is what I call the uh, Chad Nation that follows this channel. We Chads are nice people who respect opinions who also just so happen to love Avengers on PS5. And now for the Patreon question of the video. Jens El Rojo asks, what's your favorite video game ever? So that's easily uh, Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. That's actually a tough question. I really dug the Batman Arkham games growing up. I'm a huge fan of Arkham City and Arkham Origins, uh, even though I haven't played Arkham Origins in a while. Because, you know, PS3. I really love Grand Theft Auto V. Red Dead Redemption 2 is amazing, too. You know what? I'm gonna say Uncharted 2. I love, you know, Spider-Man, PS4. I love The Last of Us. I love both infamous games. Uh, Second Son is mid. And the truth is, I chose Uncharted 2 because that was like the game that showed me the potential of video games. Games didn't just have to be gameplay, it could also be partly a story which is refreshing, fun, and interesting. That's why I love Uncharted 2, and I'm still taking away a lot from that game. Thanks so much patrons in general for supporting me, I really do appreciate it, it helps a lot. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you come back to the table.